A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of Y in the Morning. Welcome back. This is Y254 TV. Now, my name is Ram Aguko. It is a pleasure being with you today on this fine Tuesday morning. You're just in time for the next conversation of the day, and it's all about matters concerning your health. Today, we want to find out, you know, uh, how deep does mental health go? Let's talk about uh, this particular issue. What do we mean when we talk about mental health? Is it possible for you to know somebody who is mentally okay, mentally healthy? Today we want to talk, to talk about specifically suicide and emotional well-being. How can you engage your son and your daughter in a, mat, in a manner that you can be able to understand or gauge or comprehend that they are actually well, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, how can we have this kind of atmosphere or where you can have these conversations with your own children, with your own parents? Kenyans, let's talk about mental well-being and suicide, emotional well-being and suicide. What is it that we need to do to reduce the suicide rates in the country? Well, today, to help us in this particular conversation, I am with uh, 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 one person who has been in this field for quite a very long time. This is Dr. Evan uh, Evangeline Wangechi. Uh, uh, she is uh, a seasoned uh, and, of course, a passionate uh, advocate of mental uh, awareness. And, of course, uh, she has been active in consulting with major universities, contributing to, uh, to contribute, contribute as a a professor with a specialization in social and cultural diversity, emotional wellness that we are going to talk about, and of course uh, issues con concerning trauma uh, therapy. So, Dr. Mangeshi, karibu sana. Thank you, Asante. I hope you're well. I'm doing great. You're doing, Thank you. You have quite a um, CV. <laughs> Yo, I, I love the things that you're doing and when I was going through, um, uh, th through it I was really interested in finding out more about what you do now uh, before we get into this particular conversation uh, let us know uh, more about what you do um, you are a professor Yes. You, you, you teach and, of course, you handle matters, con uh, matters concerning health. Let's talk about that. Uh, tell us more about what you do from uh, a, a, a professional standpoint and, of course, how you engage even people socially. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you for your time. I am a professor. I consult with mm. different universities, Arizona State University, Grand Canyon University, and also other community health clinics. Mm. Uh, I've worked in the field for 15 years, very passionate about this whole conversation about mental health. It is important to all of us because if we are not okay up, up here, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's going to affect our physical health. Yeah. Uh, mental health is so critical, but it's also unfortunate that uh, we have failed as a society mm -hmm. to take that step of bringing that awareness. Mm. So in my engagement with different stakeholders from you know, learning institutions to community health to individuals, um, I found out that we just cannot stop talking about mental health. Mm -hmm, and this mm -hmm, is the time. Mm -hmm. This is the time. This and, is the time. And, 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 and even as you could continue to talk about this, and of course I'd like you to, to engage with us from home. The hashtag is Why in the Morning, at Ram Aguko and at Y254 Channel. That is the official station handle. Remember, we are broadcasting live through our website. That's at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. So, of course, we value your feedback and engagement with us let us know where you're watching us from now dr wangeshi right. is going to answer all your questions concerning uh, emotional well-being mental health and of course we are going to to delve uh, deep into matters concerning suicide because mental health is broad but now suicide is an issue that we need to, to talk about yeah especially at, at, at a time like this now um but before we we, we we delve deep when we say mental health Many or some may think we are talking about losing your mind, yeah. madness, or, or going crazy. Yeah. What exactly yeah. are we referring to? Yeah, and you know, as we progress with our conversation, no need for anybody to walk on eggshells when yeah. they hear, you know, mental health. Actually, mm. mental health is because there's some confusion. Mm. 
between mental health and mental disorder or yes. mental health condition. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Mental health is that state of well-being mm -hmm. for an individual to be able to um, identify your own abilities to cope mm -hmm. with normal stressors of life. Yeah. That's mental health. Mm -hmm. And the mental disorder or mental health condition means then somebody has a diagnosis of, uh, a dip, you know, maybe depression, mm -hmm. you know, a mental health disorder. Mm -hmm. So th there's a di diagnosis of maybe PTSD. Mm -hmm. It could be bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, just different things. So uh, there's a difference there. So, so, so if someone s says that uh, we need to check into your mental well-being, they're not insulting you. Not, there's no insult. They're, they're, they're just caring, they're showing compassion, they're expressing mm -hmm. empathy. And just like I would ask about, how is your physical health? Do we, how do we feel about that? Exactly. Are we, yeah. So exactly. it's pretty much the same thing. We just need to normalize the conversation surrounding our own uh, emotional well-being mm -hmm. and understand that if emotionally we are dysregulated, then our normal life will be also dysregulated, will be exactly. off course. Exactly. And we need to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now, if, if, if you look at the state of the country, um, mm. the, as you know it, and of course, yeah. you've interacted with so many people, yes. and uh, you've interacted not just so many people, but even as youths, because I know you are at the Young African Leaders Initiative. Yes. The, the Mandela Washington Initiative. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. They changed the the, Yali. the name. Yeah, yes. to Young African Leaders Initiative. Yeah, um, um, you've interacted with so many people and you've been able to um, pick notes. You can see um, these people are not comfortable talking about it. These people are comfortable talking about it. If you look at matters concerning emotional well-being now, how far are we when you look at how we handle the young people? the youths in regards to emotional well-being. Yeah. Are we good? Do we handle them well, the youths? I have to say there is hope for Kenya. I'm a Kenyan from Mashinani, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, there is hope for us. And even for us to be having right now this conversation, it's progress. Mm -hmm. I call it, it's a good step yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. But then now is how do we engage the youth? Because we do need everybody to be at the table. Mm -hmm. when we need to listen to everyone. Mm -hmm. So w I think it's now, what do we do knowing that we, uh, the whole issue of mental health conditions or even the statistics are showing in Kenya, mm -hmm. one in 10 has um, a mental health condition. Mm -hmm. And then one in four, those who visit um, the clinic or hospital, one, one in four has a mental health disorder. Mm -hmm. So th those are many people. If you're given a hundred, let's assume maybe one million people yeah. visited the hospital this week and one in four have a mental disorder, that means you have 250,000. That's a lot of people. That's a, That's lot, of a people. lot of people. So uh, we need to bring everybody, we need to talk about uh, the issues that are affecting us mm -hmm. and impacting our productivity, mm -hmm. our relationships. Uh, it's hard to make uh, informed decisions when mentally there is, you know, some concern. A, a disconnect. Somewhere. There's a disconnect. Now, now um, uh, because of that, and the reason why I ask that is because suicide cases have risen they've risen and the number is quite alarming if if, if you look at the number of suicide case uh, rates you begin to wonder could it have been predicted? prevented yeah or prevented could it have been stopped is yeah. it possible for you to d detect yes. something yeah. at the early stages and that's what i was asking how are we handling our youths how are we, are, are we coming them well now? Let's bring it to yeah. the suicide aspect of it. Is it possible for you to detect? It is possible because we look for signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, public education, uh, every platform. I, I am glad, thank you for opening this platform because mm -hmm. this is public. We, we are bringing this awareness. To the to, people. To the people. Mm -hmm. So public education is important. We also need uh, funding. We need a budget. Because how do you reach out to the youth? 
that are struggling with so many issues. Mm. Unemployment mm. is pretty high in this country. Mm. We had two years of COVID-19. Yeah. You know, we have our vibrant youth full of energy and hope and aspirations graduating from universities and colleges with the hopes and dreams just like any other person, where do they go after that? Mm. You know, so all, all these um, socioeconomic issues, we must address them. So it's not just the mental health condition and the suicide, but what is impacting this? What is the trigger? What is triggering these issues? How do we stop it? And who is going to do it? Mm -hmm. So we need to accelerate the conversation and we need to take it seriously. Mm. We will lose lives. We are losing lives. So how we approach the person, uh, we need to pay more attention on uh, whether it's alcohol and substance use issues among our youth. Uh, we need to make sure that they have employment. They need our support. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, and they ex mm -hmm. we are the people, the adults in the room, the professionals, the leadership. Uh, we, we cannot ignore this issue. Yet, yet, yet Dr. Ongeshi, I'm wondering, can you pick out somebody who has suicidal thoughts? Yes. Some is people it tend to prevent it? It is possible because some people tend to withdraw. Mm -hmm. So let's say, Jane Doe, not their real name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were all social mm -hmm. and entertaining. Maybe that Jane Doe was the one entertaining, every, entertaining everybody else. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden now they start withdrawing from from the society or from or, their clique. What they used to do. What they used to do. So there is that lack of pleasure in you know in pleasurable things, things mm -hmm. that would entertain them or would please them so or they tend them. to interest them mm -hmm. so they tend to uh, withdraw mm -hmm. uh, also the lack of sleep sometimes or people sleeping way too much overeating some yeah, of, those are yeah, some of the yeah. signs we must look for mm -hmm. sometimes people are posting on their social media platforms about death and dying mm. so when somebody is uh, uh, fixated on death or I want to die, or what if I died, what, you know, nobody would care. You know, so, so sometimes we look at these things and we think that, you know, um, they're just going through a moment, they'll wake up the next day and they'll be okay. Yeah, it's not yeah. just a moment. It, it, uh, it, it, we must pay attention to it, we must address it um, with a lot of sensitivity. We need to be kind. The approach must be very uh, calculated mm -hmm. when we are doing it. Mm -hmm. But there are symptoms, there are signs, we just need to pay more attention. Um, there's also the issue of depression that kicks in because someone saying, you know, I, I want to die. Where did that thought come, come from? from? What triggered the thought? So there has to be a lot of uh, hopelessness and helplessness and feeling like these um, Nobody cares about me, and if I died, nobody will cry. Maybe no one will, will mm. attend my funeral. So mm. there's a lot of hopelessness, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's why we got to listen. That's the best gift we can give to each other. But, but, but now you see, this is Africa. <laughs> but, yes, let me, let, let, it let, is. Let, yeah, Africa. It is Africa. Where you'll find a Kenyan parent will be told by the child, I want to kill myself, I want to die, and the, and the parent will say, do it. I will bury you. Yeah. And we will mourn, and life will move on. And life will move on. But you know what? Life, we know for sure, will not move on. But then how do you bring this kind of conversation yeah. in a home where a parent will say, just kill yourself, there's no problem. I have other, sh other kids, you're not the first one. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't <laughs> care. It is your life. If you want to destroy it, destroy it on your own. Yeah. The parents, again, they, we all must be sensitive. Mm. To, to these issues. When somebody starts that manner of conversation, you know, I'm gonna die, I'll kill myself. I mean, the more they continue that, it will and may turn to yes, mm. they will kill. And yes, the parent will cry. And they'll be sad, even and though they'll they, be mourning. Even though they, they tell you, uh, uh, you want a rope, I can buy you a rope. Yeah. <laughs> you know how they say that? Uh, I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard even, you know, I've heard all manner of things. But I think it's about time we grow up from that. Mm -hmm. Because these are serious issues, these are public health issues, mm -hmm. and they are affecting our lives. 
Yeah. 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 You know, we going back to the parents and the children. Yes, there are some parents that say that, but we have adverse childhood experiences. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. are trauma. Some of them are traumatic events, things that somebody said, things that are statements that our parents said to us. Mm -hmm. It may not hurt in the moment. I may not have that reaction in the moment. But in my adulthood, that may be triggered by something. Oh, my parent told me this. Mm -hmm. So we cannot be casual about, about these yeah, mental yeah. health conversations. Mm -hmm. we we need to we're going to have so many casualties. We already have had, you know, and there is people a, there is one that took place yesterday. Yes, about the 15-year-old young yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, no, no, no. We got to address this. Now, we've talked about how you can be able to pick some of these signs. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and you were talking about how you're going to address. Now, let's give different scenarios and different circumstances. Um, and, and, and of course, I know that it, this conversation is going to help somebody who is watching us. So if at all you have an issue, send us your question. Send us your issue. Dr. Mangeshi here will be able to answer them as we continue with this conversation. What a problem or what is your circumstance? when it comes to mental health, suicide, and of course, we want to talk about emotional well-being. Right. Let's pick up a scenario where we have um, um, a child, a young man who is uh, uh, coming from a dysfunctional family where the parents are having issues. You know, maybe it's a, it could be divorce. It could mm -hmm. be a circumstance where, you know, the, 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 the family is always going at each other. You know, they're always not understanding one another. So the child feels out of place. What would you say should be done in a circumstance or that kind of a scenario? Yeah. So, you know, there, there are so many families, unfortunately, that there's, there's dysfunction in the home. Yeah. And there's domestic, you know, uh, issues in the home or mm. yelling and just bickering and all of that. Uh, number one, I think the mistake that the, the adults or the parents make is exposing their children mm -hmm. to that, you know, that argument, the chaos yeah. in the home. You, we need throw to, you throw words, they listen. Right, they're hearing, they can hear you and they're mm. watching you. You're really the, the first role models they're paying attention to. So I think we need to protect the children. Mm -hmm. And also this assumption of their kids, they don't get it, they don't understand, uh, that <laughs> is do. misleading. They do. They do, and they're listening and they're taking notes. They will not forget, they will never forget. Mm -hmm. So we need to get care for, for the children. There's mm -hmm. therapy for children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, education, even with the teachers where they, these kids are going to school. Yeah. I think we need to educate everybody on how can we provide services, mental health care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need the mm -hmm. treatment. So, so, so in, in, in such a home, yeah. the parents, or the elderly should not argue in front of the child for the emotional well-being yeah. of that particular child. Correct. Because you, you for, for his sake or her sake. Right. Take all your arguments and disagreements somewhere else mm -hmm. for the sake of the well-being of your children. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, but yet we have some parents who involve their children in these arguments. Yeah, that's why we have something called family therapy. If there's uh -huh. dysfunction in the family, mm. there's family therapy. Family therapy will help you reason together, come back at the table and figure out what is happening with us. Because something is out of uh -huh. order. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, now, now quickly, these, um, some parents do this. They say that uh, because I'm not talking to my husband, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking to my wife, so they say to the child, go tell him, yeah. go tell her. Yeah. That's triangulation. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they're, they're doing the triangulation. Yeah. They're putting the child to play the role of the adult. That's already a dysfunction in the, mm -hmm. in the whole family unit. Exactly. Because there's a role of the parent, there's a role of the child, and we need to let the children be the children mm -hmm. and the adults to be the adults. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, I love that because this is the well-being, the emotional well-being of the child. Emotional well-being, yeah. What we do and 
the business we expose to these children mm -hmm. will impact their adult life. Mm -hmm. That is a no-brainer. It is going to happen. The decisions they make. Now, let's move on from the child. Let's come now to the parent. Yeah. I'm a husband to my wife and we have been arguing for so long and, 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 and life is hard. COVID struck. Yeah. I lost my job. Mm -hmm. I need to pay my rent. I have loans. My kids need to go back to school. My wife needs this manicure, pedicure, rent, what yes. the hair done. It's, it's, a, it's a lot to take in as a man. And a man decides to do what? You know what? I will kill my wife. I will kill my child. And I'll kill myself. Yeah. Let's talk about that particular issue. How, how should a man handle such kind of pressure? And push away these suicidal tendencies. Yeah, I like to say, be the master of your own emotions. Be, be your own master. Mm. Know the thoughts you think. What kind of thoughts? The emotions, the feelings you have. So when a thought like that crosses your mind, mm. we need to stop and ask, where did that thought come from? What triggered the thought? What is going on? in my life, not somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we spend a whole lot of time um, worrying about what others are thinking about us, yeah. what they are saying about us. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not so important. Mm. We need to pay attention to our own emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. And then if there are concerns, then reach out for help. Identify someone who has the best interest at heart. Now, you are a man. You're Even right. men talk. Now, now you see, it, it, that is a problem. Even here. We have, men talk. We have men who, they're thinking of committing suicide, but they're afraid of, of, of sharing because yeah. we, have a, we are living in a society where in Africa you're told, be a man. Yeah. And you're afraid of sharing because it, once you share, yeah. they'll consider you as weak. Oh, I like it. So be a man is true. We do want you to be a man and you are a man. And in fact, the sharing, the being vulnerable, mm. it's a strength, is not a weakness. So for a man to share with a trusted friend or even going for therapy or whatever, it, it shows you, you really care. And that's actually what makes you even more of a man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes you more of a man. Being vulnerable is a strength. It's not mm -hmm. a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. Because that shows you are ready to fight for your own emotional well-being, for mm -hmm. your own life, for your family. Death by suicide is not the solution. Who should a man talk to? Oh. Let's, let, who, yeah. What are the options that are, are, are available that can give this man help? You know, people can even reach out to your spiritual leader. Mm -hmm. You know, they are, you know, your faith leader. Reach out to your faith leader and talk to them. Uh, be vulnerable with that person. If they don't have the answer to what you're looking for, then of course, Find a referral. Uh -huh. Yeah, find mm -hmm. a co you know, I don't, I don't encourage co-workers because you have a different relationship with co-workers. Yes, yes. You know, we need to teach people about setting healthy boundaries mm -hmm. uh, and knowing what is your space and mm -hmm. your lane, you stay in your lane. But there's help. I mean, you can tell me somebody doesn't have a friend outside of work. If you don't have one, I think it's time to start working on one, for identifying one. A friend? A friend that you can talk to, or even a spouse, or even a sibling that oh. you trust. Mm -hmm. But there is help. I don't think th there is help. We just need to step out of it and mm -hmm. acknowledge that I do need help. Because even that acknowledgement, mm -hmm. it, it takes another courage to say, you know, I do need help, and it's now. Now, I'm, I, I, I'm looking at, a son, at, at still on men. Sure. <laughs> because now this is where it gets spicy. A man who is uh, being told by friends mm -hmm. that, you know what, your wife cannot do that to you. Ah. You're the man of the house. Yeah. You're the man. Be the man. And, and, and the problem with this kind of scenario is uh, it gets violent. You get home because your friends, you know, there's a way they, they poke you and they poke your ego. And it will be the man. You know, if she does something, slap her. 
it becomes it it becomes, it becomes violent right. to the point of death and you end up killing yourself now how do you see information from those external factors those friends who misadvise you to the point that you end up making a mistake it's something you do something that you might regret yeah, uh, unfortunately, that's not the definition of a friend because a friend cares. A friend cares about your family. A friend cares about every. So a friend will know, a true friend will not mislead you to mm. go and terrorize your family mm. or, you know, or your children. Yeah, yeah. Then th that's not a friend. Y you need a real friend. You need friends. You that's know, the, your the, enemy. There's those, those drinking buddies, yeah. you know? That you, you yeah, could, those may not be friends. Th mm. Those are drinking buddies. And I think that's why going back to setting healthy boundaries, knowing who is in your inner circle. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Maybe even if they are drinking buddies, uh, what kind of conversations do, do you have? Mm -hmm. How are they serving you? The so-called fri so friends that we say we have. Are yeah. they serving me? Do they have the best interest for, wow, wow. not just for me, but even for my family? Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love this conversation. I love it. Let's talk about, you, you mentioned you seeking help from a spiritual father mm -hmm. and, 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 and a spiritual leader or, or some, some friends. Yeah. Or a professional. Or a professional. Yeah. L l let's talk about that. Uh, you, you've mentioned the professional. Yes, I think that could be a solution to my answer. But still, I want you to tell me whether it is. We have people who don't have friends. The introverts, those who always stay alone, you know, and they don't go to church. So they, they, they don't have anyone like a spiritual a leader. Yeah. Who do I'm, they go to now? Yeah. I'm actually, I'm an introvert. You are? I am. I, I'm, a, <laughs> an, I'm an introvert uh -huh. and I love being in my space. So am I. I'm, I'm also an introvert. Okay, good. Yeah. But then you and I are talking. So yes. introverts do have conversations and meaningful conversations. Uh -huh. I, but then I also have to make sure that I'm more uh, intentional and deliberate. Uh -huh. uh, because I know I'm human and I need to socialize. <laughs> so I have to step out of uh -huh. my introverts, um, introvert box. In, in, in other words, uh, every introvert has somebody who they can't talk to. Yeah. And it is possible for you to, to, to have that conversation. Yeah, you have to, yeah, we need to be intentional about this. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, who are the people that um, introverts need to look out for? Because now you don't have a friend and uh, you're trying to select who amongst them yeah. because of trust issues. You, know, you, you need to trust somebody. Yeah, and if somebody has those trust issues because pe people do have trust issues, mm. of course trust, trust issues, some of them come through either because of your own life experiences. Yes, exactly, right? exactly. You've been rejected. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've gone through tough times in life until neglect in life. So now you have developed these trust issues. That is an issue that you need to, somebody needs to address. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you've got to trust someone. So if you don't have a friend and you know you need help, then absolutely find a, a professional mm -hmm. because in that setting you know it's safe um, hopefully it's guaranteed depending on the discipline of the professional how disciplined they are mm -hmm. because anything we share in our counseling sessions it should be confidential exactly yeah. exactly and exactly. even with the spiritual leaders mm -hmm. it should be confidential. should be confidential yeah. you don't just um, uh, spread it out absolutely now not. earlier on i remember you said that uh, when a man is handling these things, the first thing they need to do is to um, control. You mentioned that. You need to control and, and, uh, uh, your emotions, trying to bring a balance. Yeah. And, 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 and now I am wondering, there are many who are having that particular problem, trying to control themselves. Not just men, even women, everybody cuts across, trying to control their emotions. Because once they have broken down, they have broken down. Yeah. How, how do you learn to control? Is it possible to control in the first place? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, I would say being in charge yes. of your emotions. How can you be in charge? Um, it's being more intentional. Mm -hmm. It's stopping yourself before, you know, s sometimes you are too impulsive. Uh. You just jump into something. You haven't thought about it. You haven't thought through it. Mm. And you, you're just impulsive. Mm. That impulsivity will then cause us to get in trouble. Mm. But if we can stop ourselves and think through something, mm -hmm. you know, before I say anything, then I need to hold on. 
yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. how will that thought, how will that statement, or if I go somewhere with my drinking buddies, mm -hmm. how will that serve my family mm -hmm. and my own emotional well-being? Now, 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 let's talk about the women. We've talked about the, the, the kids, yes. the men. I want us to talk about the women. Yes. And, and, and this is where uh, it, it, it gets tricky some, at, at some point because it, it is a woman who is meant or, or expected to balance between work and home and business and ah. kids and family and husband. You want to juggle all these things at the same time. Women can sometimes have these tendencies where they give up. A woman can, can say, you know what, I just want to commit suicide. This life is it's too hard for me to bear. You have a child, the father has left you. Yeah. You're saying, I will kill this child and kill myself. I don't know what to do. Talk to the women. Yeah. How can they manage this yeah I, I have to celebrate the women because I think women we are so we're strong mm -hmm. we are, you know some of us are just tough cookies they yeah. are multitasking mm -hmm. they are balancing work-life balance mm -hmm. uh, women are strong but uh, women they're human too mm -hmm. so they need support women need the men to come in and support them mm. and encourage them and provide mm -hmm. this idea of a man uh, excuse me a woman running the whole business at home, the kids, the, yeah. who's cleaning, who's cooking, super who's woman. eating. There's nothing like <laughs> a super, that I know of, mm -hmm. of a superwoman. We're human. But uh, women have that tenacity that, that, you know, we are strong and we are ready to give up everything so we can serve others. But we also need to recuperate. We need to be re-energized in that space. Mm -hmm. So even our own emotional well-being as women uh, is important. It is very important. It's very important. It's very important. So Every so woman needs a, a support system. And, and, and that pressure. The can pressure be is too much. Too much. Yeah. 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 And, and you, you don't know what how to how to do it. And you wake up the next morning, you're tired of the routine. The routine. Yeah. The routine. Sometimes it's boring. Um, but how can we help the, our, the women? You know, break that the monotony of doing one thing over and over again. We don't want them to wear out. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a nation without strong women, it's not a nation. For some, in, in the case of somebody who has committed, who has tried. Uh -huh. Attempted. <laughs> attempted. Uh -huh. Correct term. Attempted, attempted suicide. Attempted, yes. How should you handle such kind of a case for somebody who has attempted it before? Yeah, approach is so important. Mm -hmm. We, we need to be sense. We need first of all, we must be direct. So let's say somebody reports thoughts of suicide. Mm -hmm. Okay, we we need to be very direct with that person. Mm -hmm. Are you having the thoughts? If they say yes, we cannot leave them alone. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that they are safe mm -hmm. because now it turns out it's not just about their own safety, but the safety of others. Because wow. anything can go south uh, very mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we also want to make sure that. Um, they have the support that they need. There's no need to humiliate, to abuse, to threaten the person. It's a mental health disorder. It's mm -hmm. a condition. Mm -hmm. We don't abuse and humiliate those who come to us and say they have a cancer diagnosis or diabetes. Mm -hmm. we, we take care of them. We support mm -hmm. them. We need to bring the same energy and the same thought into when we are taking care of someone who is expressing, uh, you know, suicidal thoughts or homicidal thoughts or mental health conditions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So making sure that that person is safe, uh, asking them directly whether or not they have thoughts of harming themselves. Mm -hmm. um, how long have they had those thoughts? Mm -hmm. What are the the weapons, if they have any weapon, or rather the means mm. of wanting to harm themselves. Okay, so w there are questions that must be asked, and they must we must be clear. Yeah, we can we cannot give conflicting messages. We need to be very clear, and please be kind to these people. Mm -hmm. yeah. be, be, be intentional. And, be and intentional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I love that. I'm, I'm being told time is not on our side. Thank you. <laughs> so, it's, it's great. Um, I have lots of things <laughs> that I, 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 I want to ask, but um, as we bring this conversation to a close, I'd like to give you uh, time to just have a final word, parting shot for the day when it comes to uh, you know, suicide and uh, mental well-being. Yeah. And of course, I would like you to talk to the people who are watching you today. And of course, that is your camera. 
Yeah, I think what I would like to say to all of us is that death by suicide is not the solution. Mm -hmm. um, there is hope. Uh, you know, we've gone through so much, especially the last two years. That doesn't mean we give up hope. That doesn't mean um, there's no one who cares. There are people that care. There are friends that care. There are family members that care. And so for those who are in leadership, the professionals in the field, we all need to come together and continue with this conversation. We just cannot stop talking about mental health. It's a public health issue mm -hmm. and this is the time. All but right. to everybody, there is hope, honestly. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. That's yeah. our message of the there is hope. There is hope. How can somebody get uh, a hold of you? Is it possible? It is possible. Mm -hmm. They can go to evangelinewangeshi.com. That is my website. Mm -hmm. uh, on my website, there is a phone contact, there is a Facebook page, which is Evangeline Wangeshi, and I look forward to reading all your comments and questions <laughs> and everything. We're going to have fun together. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Asanda, Asanda. Asanda. I, I will keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I love your energy. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Thank there you. is hope. There is hope. <laughs> that brings us to the end of this particular conversation right here uh, on matters concerning suicide and mental well-being. Have you learned something? I definitely have. My name is Ram Aguko. It has been a pleasure being with you. We're taking a short break, but we still have more coming up your way. Keep it wide in the morning.